Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Taylor and today uh, I'm gonna do a tutorial on an effect that I found on the uh, the subreddit Photoshop. If you've never heard of Reddit, it's a pretty much a giant forums I would say, but uh, there's a subreddit for Photoshop which is just a giant board where people can talk about uh, Photoshop and ask questions and stuff. And there's a really cool uh, effect that somebody was asking questions about and somebody said that it can be done with just a gradient map. And it's true, you can just do it with a gradient map, but I'm gonna show you how you can go above and beyond and how to make this effect look really cool using other adjustment layers, as well as showing you guys how you can make the uh, border and stuff and how to do the quote and the cursive and stuff like that, just to make it all look really cool. So uh, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, I started with this picture right here of uh, LeBron James. I just thought it was a really cool looking picture, so you know it was already you know graded pretty nicely and it looks pretty cool um, it's pretty sharp it could be sharper but you know it's kind of dim in there so I, I understand that it's a little noisy so I'm just gonna unlock the background layer um, another thing that I'm gonna pull in just really quickly is this LeBron James quote that I found I'm just gonna throw that in there um, Put it under the background layer for now just so that i have it for later i'm not going to mess with it the uh if you want to see it the quote is you have to be able to accept failure to get better i thought that was a really cool quote it's kind of short too so i can fit it in one line so just to start with this we're going to go down here the little half black half white circle that's the adjustment layer icon so if you click that and then you go to gradient map click that and then i already have some colors chosen here so um, this color over here, double click it, and then type in 23070B, and that's our dark red color. And then our light red color over here is going to be FF122E. Press OK, press OK. And you know, you get that really cool effect really quickly, but it's not exactly what I wanted to go for, so I'm gonna lower the opacity just a little bit maybe like 80%, I'll mess with it a little bit more later. And we're gonna make another adjustment layer and just set that to solid color. And we're gonna make this almost just a tiny bit pinker than red. If you wanna use that color, if it's FF0018, press okay, and then set that to darken. So if you just see what this layer does, I think it just brings it out a little bit more. And then you can mess with the gradient map just to kind of mess with it. And the picture that I used before, this actually isn't the picture that I used to, you know, go through and make sure I knew what I was doing. Um, the other picture looked a little bit cooler. It had different colors and stuff, so the gradient map looked a little bit better on top of it. But I think this still looks really cool. Um, you can even go in later if you know a little bit more of what you're doing and mess with the uh, layer mask and add some blacks and stuff to make the uh, ball look a little bit different, maybe the rim a little bit different. I think it'd be cooler if the rim was a little bit lighter and the ball was a little bit lighter. Stuff like that, maybe add some light effects and stuff. But I think for now, that's really cool. I got that red effect that I wanted. Um, maybe just mess with this a little bit. Oh, I think that looks really good. Just bring that down just a tad. So now we're going to get into how to make that border. And to do that, we're just gonna use a shape layer and choose fill and if you choose this one that has the red line through it it will fill it with nothing and then choose your stroke and set that to a white color and I had it set to four pixels I would think I'm gonna change that to about eight and then just kind of drag a square out see how that looks I think that looks really good if you do control a and then you click this button right here it'll automatically align it to the middle and then just kind of drag it down I think that looks really cool right there. You might want to put it a little bit lower depending on what picture you're using, but I think right there looks really good. Kind of a little bit off, not perfectly centered, a little bit down. All right, so I messed up a little bit, so I have to kind of backtrack, and I'm not sure exactly what the last thing I said was, but pretty much what we're going to do for this rectangle is we're going to create a layer mask. And to do that, we're just gonna create a selection. So go up to your rectangle selection, make like a square. It doesn't really matter on the size. A little bit bigger it, than the quotation mark that you want is probably best. 
but it doesn't really matter too, too much. And then we're just gonna make a new layer and fill that with black. It doesn't really matter what color you choose, I just like black. Do the control A and center it trick again. And then we're going to uh, select it by holding control and clicking on the little icon right here. Going back down to rectangle one and then going down and clicking this layer mask button. It's going to create a layer mask and if we delete that um, square that we made, you can see that it's only showing things that were inside that square to begin with. If we click on our layer mask, it's because it created it an inverse of what we actually wanted. So if we click on our layer mask and then go to image, adjustments, invert, we have our punch out. So if we unlink the, the layer mask in the layer, that means we're able to actually move around and make it smaller and perfectly make the size that we want for our quotation marks. So I think that's pretty good. You can make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger depending on what you want. Um, I think what I had was pretty fine. I'm holding uh, shift and alt by the way to make it uh, scale on the center point. So if you want to use the fonts that I'm going to use, I'll have them down in the uh, description below um, for the quotation marks. I'm going to be using Prestige, nope, not there, Prestige Elite Standard, set those to white, Do the Control A center trick, move them down, Control T, Shift Alt, scale up. I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna push them over to the side a little bit just to make it look a little bit more centered within the box. The quote, we already have it, so I'm just gonna move it back up on top and I'm going to change it to a font called Kandara. Scale that down. I'm actually gonna do the Control A center trick. And now you kind of realize that our box isn't quite the size that fits with the font. So I'm going to change the font to white. And now the reason that we did a rectangle shape layer instead of just doing a selection and stuff like that is because later we can come back and move this and it'll make it nice and pretty without having any stretching or anything like that. So there we go. We have our box. I actually think that I'm going to move all of this down. Didn't quite grab everything. I'm actually gonna link everything back up. Move everything down, please. Okay, it's it's just not gonna move everything down with me nicely. It's just, I think that looks a little bit better. I think it looks weird with this picture. But last but not least, we're gonna add the, uh, the little cursive, almost like it's a signature. If you can find a picture of a signature online, that'd be better. Um, just kind of scan that on or copy and paste it. But for the time being, I'm going to use a font called Brush Script Standard. Center that, Control T, Shift Alt, and scale it up. Move it up a little bit, and there you go. Um, a couple things that you can do to make this look a little better is uh, highlight all of these, um, the white layers, so like your quotation marks, your box the quote and his name and lower the opacity down to like 95 maybe a little bit lower it might look a little better just to kind of blend things in and then another thing that I think is really cool about this is you can change the gradient map later on so the reason that we work non-destructively is that later we can go back and change this so if you want to go back later and you're like oh I think this would look better in blue you can do that so just to kind of show you what that would look like, set the gradient map to blue, and then the color mask, or the color fill, to blue as well, and you've got that effect. Or you can go in and say, I think this might look better in a light green. Maybe not because of the way that we have the darken set up, but if you change this to like color burn or multiply, it looks really good. I think that turquoise looks pretty good on there. But uh, I'm actually gonna keep it saved as the as the red for this tutorial. I thought that looked really good, and I think it matches really well with uh, 
with the person that we have. So I'm going to leave it there. If you like this tutorial, make sure you uh, leave a thumbs up and I will uh, try to make more of these videos. You know, if you guys ask questions and stuff, I'll try to get to your questions and answer them either in the comments or in videos. Um, right now I'm kind of just scouring on Photoshop's uh, subreddit and trying to answer different questions like that but usually it takes me a few days to like hype myself up for a video or find time to make a video so like I don't always get to it before other people answer the question but uh yeah guys thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one